the visit that is slated to take place uh, of Joe Biden visiting Israel. Now, the White House has posted on social media platform X this morning and they have said that the President of the United States and the Vice President uh, Kamala Harris were briefed by their national security team on the latest updates in the wake of the Hamas' abhorrent attacks in Israel and the worsening humanitarian crisis in Gaza. So this is the particular update that we are receiving and we will go back to our uh, to our conversation with Siddhant. Now Siddhant, this comes in as a crucial update because while we are focusing a lot on the kind of message that is being sent out with the President's visit to Israel, it is also important to remember the kind of, con the kind of circumstances uh, that is uh, currently underway in Israel because it is a war zone and when it comes to that, security will be a very crucial aspect for the President. Uh, so what more details are we gathering on this aspect? Yes, so national, they are, this could be a, a routine national security team briefing or to uh, President of the United States and the Vice uh, President uh, Kamala Harris. But since this uh, briefing is coming uh, perhaps a few hours before uh, President Biden is going to travel to uh, Israel, uh, 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 Israel to, to meet uh, President Netanyahu and perhaps to stand in solidarity with the people of uh, Israel. So this is an overall national security briefing. In fact, uh, what is happening in Israel and um, between Israel and Hamas is, is, uh, is bearing a, uh, international ramifications. In fact, security at the various places across the world, at metropolitan places, have been beefed up. Security of the Jewish establishments have also been beefed up. Homeland Security and FBI are coordinating with each other perhaps to stop any sort of an untoward incident on American soil because there is also an, uh, a proper intelligence which says that terror groups like Hamas or perhaps uh, Islamic State can use American soil for some untoward, uh, 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 to execute some untoward terror incident. Right. So that is also an input. So the overall review of the situation, including what is happening in mm -hmm. West Asia mm -hmm. to the to its ramifications and you know the threat, uh, the potential threat to the American soil, right. all have been discussed in this meeting, and perhaps that was briefed uh, to President Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris. Right, uh, Sidhan, Sidhan, thank you for bringing us all those details with this crucial uh, meet that is slated to take place. Now we are going to shift our focus to some of these ground reports that are that we are getting. Remember, our reporters are at the ground uh, at ground zero, bringing us constant updates from the field as to what exactly is unfolding. In the war zone. Now, our foreign affairs correspondent Abhishek Jha is reporting from the war zone and listen in to his conversation with a civilian volunteer. How would you describe the situation in the city currently? So, right now we have um, about 4,000 to 5,000 people that stayed in the city. The rest of them have been evacuated and they're living either uh, with family outside of Sderot or in hotels. Mm -hmm. um, the government and the city, really, the city is providing for them, making sure that they have everything that they need from mental health support to clothing and food and provisions and anything that they need. And right now we're trying to take care of also, uh, we have people on the ground from the municipality in every hotel. The kind of uh, population the city was and the kind of attack that the city had. There's a lot of frustration and anger among the people. Uh, there is an Israeli offensive that is going on in Gaza. Right. There is also world which is watching Gaza and the humanitarian crisis mm -hmm. rising up there. Mm -hmm. I mean, w how would you say, like, you, you need to finish them off, mm -hmm. but at the same time, you need to save people who are unnecessarily being killed. How, how well, I, I have a few things to say about mm -hmm. that. First, I hope the world is watching. Mm -hmm. I hope the world is watching because if the world is watching, then they see that when somebody is behaving the way they did, like the Nazi, like Nazi Germany, then something needs to be done because back then people were quiet. So that's one. And second, um, you want to put re responsibility on someone, you put it on Hamas. You put it on Hamas because raising a generation that is like that, not wanting peace and just wanting war, taking all of your funds all the time and putting it into war instead of efforts of mm -hmm. peace, that's on you and that's on your head. It has been about 10 days since the terrorist attack happened on most of the southern cities of Israel, Ashdod, Ashkelon, uh, Sidroth and Yikimi. These were the many cities which came under the terrorist attack and rockets that were fired from the locations of Hamas along the Gaza Strip. Since then, 
security forces have taken full control of the area. We have seen many cities have been left abandoned by the citizens. Sidrot, which hosted about 36,000 people, is now a ghostly town with an eerie vibe and empty houses all along. How the world is watching the situation unfold is also very interesting. Initially, the sympathy of the world was with the people of Israel, how they were massacred about 1,200 Israeli people, 200 or more than 200 of them soldiers and civilians who were just killed by these Hamas terrorists. The videos, the footages were all gory and blooded and they went around the world and made headlines in favor of Israel that the terrorist action of Hamas is condemnable. Now, after 10 days, Israel has been pounding Gaza with thousands of tons of ammunition targeting Hamas locations in the midst of all the counter-offensive that Israel has been doing on Gaza. Thousands of innocent Palestinians have also been killed, many of them children, about 500 or more children. This is what the, the figures are being claimed. About 2,500 civilians have been killed in overall operations that Israeli uh, air strikes has tried to do in Gaza in order to eliminate the entire Hamas militant organization. Many senior commanders and, uh, you know, uh, infrastructure of the Hamas were also eliminated, but at a very high cost of civilian casualty. And this is where the world's attention has now started focusing. Something that happened in Israel is quickly shifting to what is happening in Palestine. Many of the people working for agencies like United Nations, other NGOs uh, who have been in the helping and aiding and supporting the basic necessities, medical uh, or hospitals for the people of Palestine, they have also been targeted. Many doctors have died, many United Nations affiliated organizations, people working for them, they have died. Uh, so the, the entire situation that started uh, with, uh, with, with a kind of counter-offensive is turning into a political revenge from the Israeli side. That is what the many of the sympathizers who stand by Palestine, they have been claiming. So my first question to you would be, and perhaps I would like to begin by asking you uh, regarding some reports uh, suggesting that Israel has announced ceasefire for five hours, but later denial came from the prime minister's office saying no ceasefire, no humanitarian aid to Gaza in exchange uh, for the evacuation of foreigners. I want to know from you, what is the status and can we expect this sort of an agreement, not today, but maybe in future? Let me be clear. There is no ceasefire. And more than that, Israel is determined to continue with its uh, fight to destroy Hamas's military and governing capabilities inside the Gaza Strip. You know, last week on October 7th, Israel suffered what is the worst terror attack in world history after 9-11. 1,300 Israelis are now dead, over 3,000 are injured, nearly 200 are now in Hamas captivity as a result of the October 7th massacre. And Israel has made a decision that in response to this ISIS-like terrorism that we saw from Hamas, Israel is going to crush Hamas. This isn't a war that Israel wanted. It isn't a war that Israel started. It isn't even a war that Israel expected, but it is a war that Israel is going to win and is going to win that war by crushing Hamas. And I think it's important for your viewers to understand as well that this is different from previous rounds of fighting with the Hamas terror group inside the Gaza Strip. This is not about trying to degrade Hamas. It's not about trying to deter Hamas. It is about destroying Hamas as a military and governing machine in the Gaza Strip so it can never again harm Israeli civilians or launch anything like the atrocities that we saw on October 7th. 